I take my kids to the movies to see Avengers. So I didn't fit it out. <laughs> I'm like, I don't even want to see myself that much. <laughs> Colossus is thanking you for everything. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day, don't forget that. Red Dwarf's never been fashionable, but it's also never been unfashionable. It's my duty as a complete and utter bastard. Yeah. <laughs> You're lying! <laughs> I compared your mother to a bloated old piskeen. <laughs> Whatever you want to do in life, you have to keep trying, because no matter what, it, there will come things that will get in the way of whatever you want to do and you just have to keep working past those things. This producer kind of sneaking over and finally he's like he's looking around and he, kind of, he says I really like Babylon 5 and then he ran away. But a kung fu musical <laughs> would be pretty wild. Yeah sure there was there was violence but it was more a team kind of violence than it was real violence in any sort of you know especially given what we're used to seeing these days on television. Um, I, I thought oh God I've arrived. I'm in a scene with Darth Vader. Fantastic. And, on that and then they shot. cut it. <laughs> <laughs> There's a whole range of emotions you can get just by moving that head slightly. Universe to Go is a fantastic way of seeing stars, but if you want to see more, watch our video of MCM Comic Con. You know, Mark Ruffalo dancing is a spectacle <laughs> that everyone should behold once in their life. Once. <laughs> <laughs> Storytelling is the most powerful way for humans to learn and contextualize their lives. And when you're lucky enough to be in a show where it really is just about the characters. And that was something that, uh, yeah, it was, it was beautiful. It's beautiful to see people so much in love with the character. That, that's really rare nowadays, so it's more like introducing these guys for like their own franchise. So Deadpool 2 is going to be much bigger in many ways. I, I have young people coming up to my table saying, my parents raised me on Babylon 5. <laughs> and I kind of go, oh, oh. I know that. that's good, no, that's really good, it's very sweet. Oh my God, <laughs> all at the same time, <laughs> it's really, but it's really cool. And I'm excited about that, that it's, it's getting back out there again. You know, we're in the middle of shooting Avengers 4 and I still don't know what's happening. <laughs> Because we get the pages we're shooting that day and nothing else about the movie. I still cannot believe that this is happening to me. And they're like, all right, well, you're going to be playing Goblin number 13. <laughs> well, a, a role that, uh, that, that really excites me was when I played that movie <laughs> hey, um, Something I, I think maybe uh, it, it, it touched me uh, whole in my heart. <laughs> I was like, oh, they're goblin noises. I was like, what do you, what do you mean they're goblin, are we goblin noises? And then it's like, oh yeah, yeah, you're just going to, you know, just do some goblin noises. And I was like, I don't, I don't want a goblin noise. I'd never done any kind of like character voices or anything. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know any goblins. Uh, uh, what? He's like, you know, just like a, you know, like a goblin. And and I had this guinea pig when I was little that I would talk to, and uh, and I was like, and it was, it was like, yeah, you do that. And then I was like, okay, cool. So for four hours, I was like, you know, I'm like, fall off a cliff, you know, get stabbed, you know. So I did that for four hours, screaming top of my lungs, just. And uh, at the end of the session, I couldn't talk. I was like, and. Uh, I was like, thanks guys! And I get it, you know, the more sex, the more breasts, the more <laughs> violence and decapitations, the more audience members you're going to get. Um, Joe, that just wasn't his thing. He didn't want to make that show. And, uh, you know, I've got young kids, um, and I was proud to be on a show where I felt like that was fairly restrained. <laughs> I went full goblin f for that, for sure. Well, I don't mean it to sound flaky, but in order to achieve something in life, you gotta know what you're, what you're walking towards. I, just, I do, I go full on. Like, I really wanna get into the character, because I feel like if I'm not 100% in, somebody out there watching is gonna be like, ah. Very early on, again, with, with some of the screen tests with BB-8, I was standing next to it, and I thought, well, it's kinda like a dog. That was where Oh, I sort of started that thought process from it's like like, like, a, like a, a sort of tenacious Yorkshire Terrier mixed with a toddler. So, Miss Ivy, have you poisoned anyone lately? Not yet, no. But oh. I am looking to. Okay. <laughs> the Comic Con at Excel is so much better with a meal deal from the Bagel Factory. I I really wanted to be 
um, an action hero. And there wasn't any. This is in the 70s. For women, you know, Mrs. Peel was a big deal to me. I loved Diana Rigg as Mrs. Peel in the Avengers. And it was just, where do you get to see that? I mean, yeah, fine, you know the rules of life, but the truth is, life's messy. You know, like, it's not always easy to follow the rules of life, um, even though you know them. You know, you have the angel on one side, and then you've got the little other angel or devil or whatever on the other side, but that's just reality, because life is never neat. Life is almost never anything but kind of complex and messy, and I found that to be the most redeeming aspect of his character, that he felt to me like... Um, like a real character who you didn't know whether he was going to do the right thing, but fundamentally you could kind of count on him in the end to be there. Snow White, have you had any interesting red apples lately? Oh my goodness, not at all. I stayed away from red apples. <laughs> uh, the first hump, I would say, which was when I first started out, just realizing that you can't take it personally when you don't book a role and you don't get the right project because it's just what's right for the film and they're not trying to hurt your feelings or do anything like that. You just have to realize that rejection comes along with the job. Right, sir. Do you know any good jokes, then? Any jokes? Oh, I know plenty, but just today, I just want to make you smile. <laughs> he is charming, though. He's a lovely guy. Like, I, he's the only guy who responds to my tweets. I just love that horror films, they have so much going on. It's not just one thing. Like, with dramas, they can make you cry, and you can be really invested in the characters. And then with happy films, you're laughing throughout it, and it's just like a comedy. Is but with horror films, it's a comedy, it's a drama, and you scream a lot throughout it. There's just so much going on, and I just love that you can experience all these different emotions with horror films. Have you rescued anyone lately? Oh, loads of people. You know what? Little kids, really scared, walk around here. First time they've been in. Oh, because I've been wanted to be an actress since I was little. So now imagining what else I would be. I love kids, I love babysitting, <laughs> so maybe a nanny, I think that would be really fun. Back in the day we had Francie's, she was the upgraded Barbie, she had bendable arms and legs and a twist and turn waist. <laughs> and I would make her into my heroine and she, we would play Dark Shadows and we'd play Star Trek, the original series of course. And n then it, it's no wonder in my mind that I ended up doing horror and science fiction. Uh, as much as I did. Oh. But you look really cool. <laughs> I know, I know, thank you. You know, we dressed up kind of very fancy for the occasion, so you know, we have to look good. We thought we were going to be shooting right away, and he did. And he's standing there, the girls are kind of behind me, and I'm looking at his face, and I see his face go... <laughs> like his eyes kind of like start going in, right? And I was like, what? And then, then I look down, and then I just see his pants getting soaked like he's peeing and I was like I was like what, what are you and so as I'm like what are you action and then he's like runs into the water and I was like wait what and I start running I'm like oh no I gotta follow him into the water and so all is coming into my face as I'm like <laughs> swimming into the ocean he thought it was funny <laughs> it was funny afterwards, but man, <laughs> yeah, Jason Frank. What's your latest adventure? Uh, well, I've just been there going around. We should all be free to make our own decisions and choices, but you should be very upfront and willing to take responsibility for your decisions and choices. <laughs> <laughs> I give a fight with Black Widow. It's always better when you make up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, come out. Don't come out. So, who are you guys today? Um, that is a question. <laughs> that is a question. Made up. Completely made up. Just wanted to be really like fantasy. Peter Cushing was Peter Cushing pretending to be Governor Tarkin, wearing his carpet slippers. And, but I'm doing it because I'm me, pretending to be Peter Cushing, pretending to be, you know, so it's a sort of, it's a further remove and very, very hard to forget that you're acting when you've got this huge sort of head camera thing on with the lenses poking in, in your eyes. I was glad of it. I was glad I didn't have to walk and talk anywhere at the same time. <laughs> yeah. I just, it was a just blo black a polo gig. neck jumper. Yeah. It's a good gig. It's the black background and then a bit like this.
sitting here like this, really. Well, so, why are you dressed in this wonderful way today? Okay, so um, we're all members of the Rebel Legion. Like, when I moved from Montreal to Toronto, I told my agent, I want a show that is, and I described, one, two, three, four, five, and it was like a, a list of ten things, and it was Dark Matter, and the character was three, literally, and that... I, it didn't even exist at the time that I said to my agent, this is what I want. And uh, her character, and she says, oh, I, I've missed you, I've missed you so much. Uh, her and the Peter's doctor reunited, and, and, um, and the, my doctor says, um, well, my dear, I think he's missed you too. Um, this space should be getting a little bit dusty, it just needs a bit of a spring clean. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and Peter's 12 o'clock, she said, no, 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 you can't say that, you can't say that. <laughs> why not, why not, you know. And he comes from that kind of era way. I'm not sure if I feel very safe around these guys, but they're pretty... Don't worry, man. He said, don't worry. As opposed to R2, because R2 has got a head spin and, and Kenny would do lovely things making him wobble and stuff, but you can take that same performance and you can change the sound. A lot of it was done, Ben Burt did most of R2's acting in a sound edit. So you can take that movement and have him you know, jiggling around and, and, and make that angry noise, R2 angry noises, or you can take that off and you can put R2 scared noises, but you've still got the same movement. With BB-8, just, just by popping his head down, you can make him look sad or you can make him, you know, you, I've, got, I've got, you know, various controls on the head so by making him look scared you can just cock his head and uh, and you, the, the, you know when, when he finds when he f thinks that Poe's dead at the beginning just by slowly dropping the head and then turning him around and, and taking him out very slowly you can you can you know use him to, to be sad or there's, there's a whole range of emotions you can get just by moving that head slightly plus doing the noise at the time helps everybody relate to that this is what happens when you don't have breakfast that was certainly most <laughs> <laughs> and then Darth Vader turns up on set. And going, oh, it's actually Darth Vader. He's real and big and scary, and uh, it was really kind of uh, exciting. It was like, it was like an ex no other experience I've ever had on a on a movie set. I feel the force is strong. <laughs> when the first assistant director shouts, right, I'm going to give you two cues. Uh, I'm going to shout. Uh, action and then there's going to be a pause and then I'm going to shout X-Wing and that's when you duck. <laughs> you think, okay, so that's fine. And then when you've got a guy shouting X-Wing on top of his voice and you have to go like that, you suddenly think, yeah, that's the coolest thing I've ever done in my whole life. <laughs> Lots of the lines that you hear in the movie are made just on the set, just from like the moment that he felt it. So it was a cool thing and a funny thing when we were doing the first part, it was when I was having that Colossus puke if you remember yeah so it was funny because the director Tim Miller he has this kind of empathy he doesn't like to listen to people puking you know he just has the same urge then so he would like like leaving the the set just because he couldn't like listen to those so even like if I want to like do something that without him just to try I would go with like you know so he just goes away and then I try to do it and it was funny, you know, but like mainly the funny things from the movie are in the movie. We didn't go out drinking together. We didn't go out clubbing. We don't, A, none of us are really like that. Uh, it's not so much our thing. A couple, but most, no. Um, I would say that we're a whole hell of a lot like family, like your extended family that you see at Christmas and, and New Year's and you respect and like and care for and are happy to see. But we all had our other lives, and we all lived our other lives, and when we finished work, we went home. And it wasn't like we were like, oh my god, we're the best of friends. It, it wasn't that, and, and I think I respected that um, and needed that in my life. They were colleagues, they were an extended family. So if a girl is sitting down texting on her phone, you go over to her and say, hey, hey, stop <laughs> texting me, people are watching. <laughs> <laughs> then she's like, <laughs> and you're like, yeah, how's it go? You know? But they just want to see the personality. They want to know that you're not a cuckoo. As soon as a girl thinks you're not a cuckoo, you're in. And with dudes, as soon as, well, you say hello to a dude, you're in. So it's just, we're so excited for a girl to say one word to us. It's like, hi, hello. That's it. So is this the kind of advice you'll be giving Tom Holland? Then, no, he's a, no, he's awful with, no. <laughs> that dude can pick up a girl with a truck. <laughs> he's awful, he's awful. Awful. Hey, guys, it's a Teddy here. Hi, it's me. 
<laughs> that worked, see? I was like, yeah. Also beat up Spider-Man, so if you're a little white dude, don't mess with me. Dude has a, dude has a, a, a Ghostbuster suit that works. Like he's walking around here looking for a ghost. You can gangster. To the Mystiques, great job. You've never seen an unattractive blue woman. Think about it. Think about it. See what I'm saying? Not one. I saw all of you were like, yeah, she was pretty too. But the Avatar, boy, she was pretty. Yeah. See what I'm saying? All of them. But I was very upset when I wasn't cast as Beast in X-Men. He's blue. <laughs> he's blue, he's blue, he's blue. Like, Beast is the man. Just straight up hang up, hang upside down and read books all day. In little shorts and no shirt. Gangster. <laughs> Man, you know what I'm saying? Like, you go in somewhere, like you're in a bar and you're talking to a girl and some guy walks up and starts talking to him. Like, I bet this dude wears tidy whites. That's Tom Holland. He still wears fruit of alums. That's Tom Holland. Okay. Say it all, man. My kids, like, I'm like, you know, your dad is a superhero, dog. Like, I'm cool. No. 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 It's Halloween. My one kid is like, I want to be Spider Man. The other kid is like, I want to be the Incredible Hulk. I'm like, you live with a superhero. Literally, superhero made you breakfast and took you to school. <laughs> Every day. And you, nothing. No. But, no, nah, my kids are, they're hilarious because at the end of the day, I'm just dad. You know, mm. I'm, I'm like, it's broken, fix it. I'm hungry, make it. You know, it's like, that's, you know, that's, it's, I'm crying, hold me. And that's the way I like it. I mean, I feel like if at any point in time they look at me as Falcon instead of Anthony, I would be heartbroken. Stores, but let's say I was at a big toy store and I saw a, a thing of my action figures. So I was like, that's me, right? So I run up and my son goes, Daddy, Daddy, if that's you, I was like, that's me. And he pressed the button and the dude sounded like, like, I don't know what the voice was, but it wasn't my voice. Oh. And I was like, why didn't they just call me and use my voice? Like, I would have did it for free. Don't get some other dude like, to do my voice. So my kid looks at it, and he pressed the button. He pressed it again. He pressed it a fourth time. He turns to me. He goes, Daddy, this isn't you. <laughs> I was like, nah, that's me. He goes, no, this isn't you. I was like, no, it's my figure. And he goes, no, Dad, I don't think this is yours. We should keep looking. <laughs> but dude, that's me. So I take it up to the front, and literally, I'm with a five-year-old. I take it up to the front, and I'm like, excuse me, is this me? <laughs> the woman goes, what? I say, is this, is this action figure, is this, is this me? Is, this is my action figure, is this me? And she goes, you can be whoever you want. <laughs> uh, well, the Hurt Locker was three people, so, but we were in the Middle East. So that kind of messes it up, you know. Avengers, we're in Atlanta, and it's like 100 people, but we have air conditioning and food. <laughs> so, I would have to say Avengers? Well, you have the so most I did get to eat shawarma. It's funny, like the first, my first day on a Marvel set, they bring me in, they put me on a platform 30, foot, 30 feet in the air, they put all the cables on me. They're like, all right, we want you to jump off backwards, turn over like your sheet machine guns at a, helico at a helicopter as it's going over your head and you're about to fly away. <laughs> okay, roll sound, here we are. <laughs> and that was the first day, the first moment we shot on uh, Captain America uh, Winter Soldier. And I didn't know what I was doing, I didn't know what was happening in the movie, but the trailer came out two months later, and that was the moment that was in the trailer. I was like, oh, it didn't even make the movie. 
right? It ain't even in the movie. But it's in the trailer. So a lot of times, you know, with the Russo brothers, you don't even question it, man. They have a whole thing, you know, that they, um, they see for these movies. And we just are along for the ride. Going to the movies used to be an experience. It used to be a family affair. It used to be an event. Whereas now, you know, if people will go see movies just because they said it's going to be number one, and everybody know the movie's bad. You know, you will read a review on Rotten Tomatoes and be like, oh, they gave it, you know, 75% tomatoes. It's fresh. I should go see it. When they haven't even seen the movie. You know, so the, the evolution of the business has gone to, like, there are no movie stars anymore. Mm. Like Anthony Mackie isn't a movie star. The Falcon is a movie star. And that's what's weird. It used to be with Tom Cruise and Will Smith and Stallone and Schwarzenegger. When you went to the movies, you went to go see the Stallone movie. You went to go see the Schwarzenegger movie. Now you go see X-Men. So the, the, the evolution of the superhero has meant the death of the movie star. And that's the fear now, because you're now making movies for 16-year-olds and China. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> you think of some of your favorite movies growing up, those movies wouldn't get made today. Goonies? Wouldn't get made today. Halloween? Wouldn't get made today. Thing? Wouldn't get made today. <laughs> <laughs> and all of them you want. You watch Stranger Things on Netflix. Has anybody ever seen Stranger Things? <laughs> Stranger Things is Goonies. He's everything. It's, it's Goonies. <laughs> Three kids go on a mission, find an underground, there's an alien, kill the alien, Goonies. <laughs> Even when they found the little dark world where the alien was, they went down the slide like, <laughs> Goonies. So, it's just, it's a different time now. The business, they make movies for specific uh, audiences as opposed to just making good movies. And that's why people stop going to the movies because most of the movies suck. <laughs> um, as one of the um, few actors of color in the MCU, what do you think that big companies like Marvel and DC can do to improve representation in their superhero films, basically? Ah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What sound did you do? <laughs> Wait, did I? I heard you like moan and then people clap. <laughs> did I? Did you hear me? I did. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. It sounded like a, a dying llama. <laughs> Everybody was like, "Yeah, kill that llama." <laughs> um, well, I think uh, Ma uh, DC and Marvel have made huge strides. Uh, unlike any other part of the uh, film business to diversify their portfolio. I think if you look at just everything that they've done on television, everything that they've done on film, there's been multiple shows that have had female leads. I mean, Miss Haley Atwell is here today. And she was the lead of all those shows. Um, if you look at what, what they're doing with Black Panther, what they're doing with my character, if you looked at the amount of women and uh, minorities that they've put to the forefront of those two uh, universes, I think they've set a precedent that the rest of Hollywood and the film business should get behind. Thank you. I'm sorry you killed that llama. 